were interested in us, and they still are, so, you know, wonder what they're really interested in. So that's kind of, you know, could be a part of the thing, you know. I mean, you know, you just don't know. Like I say, there's lots of different people. I mean, they'd be interested in different things with different people. But like I say, I think a core part of it is it's probably a... Um, Maybe the human soul or my psychic mind or however this ends up working. You know, I don't know if that's... Uh, I'm going to try to get a little more on that, and I may later. I'm going to talk to a group and run into for the Institute for the Advancement of Air Death Studies. Now, a couple of times I've been kind of around some groups, a twins group and one of these, and kind of got run off. But I've run into a guy and got kind of interested, so... Uh, I'm going to go to this group deal and oh, I'm going be about maybe 20 people there. Maybe I can get some feedback on uh, along them lines or from it. Uh, there was a man that's quite involved with it, but Zen Benefield, he must have did a conference out here in Denver in 2010 with um, the Advancement of Deer Death Studies and, you know, talked about whatever you know, aliens and this and that. And I contacted him and I, you know, kind of wanted to get a feel, but I'm going to go to this group and uh, see if I can run into some um, of my experience. Kind of yeah, Timothy, you're, Where was that? You're, you're totally dropping out. Uh, I'm going to end the conversation at this point because it seems like every time, you know, I could talk to you on the phone before we go on the air. It's perfect. We get on the air and we talk about this implant thing. And then all of a sudden the signal just is constantly dropping out. Uh, I, I, Tim, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I think. Well, thanks for asking me, Gary. And I think he gave a lot of information out to, you know, cause there's people well, out there that feel they've well, been implanted. And what should they do? What, what do you advise people if they feel they've been implanted? Should they go talk to their doctor about it, or or, or should they just keep quiet? Yeah, I talk to the doctor. You know, they go there, and, you know, there are people they can find. I mean, get old Steve Colburn or Daryl Sims. I mean, there's, you know, at least it started. You get old of MUFON. You got a, like I say, a, Eric, he's got a, a couple of guys from MUFON that really helped him over the last several years on how to go around and look at this thing, and and that's why, well, you know, until we know something else comes up, that's about all we can, I know to do. But, yeah. Okay, Timothy, I want to thank but, you. But thanks, Jerry, you bet. Okay, my friend. Anytime, you, buddy. You, you have a Anytime. Good, uh, yes, sir. And you, you bet. Have, you have a great weekend. Well, you have the same. Okay, you take care. Bye-bye. I find it very strange, don't you, that the signal just keep. I, I don't have this problem. We He tried two separate phones. One a cell phone and one a landline, which shouldn't have this problem. It's it's really weird, wasn't it? Absolutely, and I, and I am a stout believer that there is no such thing as coincidences. So, and especially over an hour, hour and a half period, it it always happened at some crucial points. He's trying to make some good points. You know, it's frustrating. It started out fine, and then you know it kind of went from there to you know I don't know. Sometimes, you know, we have this one government agency that monitors phone calls and, you know, your emails, maybe, you know, talking about implants. They just don't want the information to, you know, get out. Absolutely. And not only that, if you have these beings that are maybe 1,000, 10,000 million years advanced than us and they're time travelers and inter uh, dimensional beings and they have these technologies to put implants in, who's to say they're not hearing us and they can just tamper with it a little bit just to, you know, to control the situation. Well, I think something is going on because, I mean, you know, like he mentioned, it was, you know, when they did some testing, it was transmitting out on some weird frequencies. So, you know, if it's transmitting, maybe it's also receiving. But what is it transmitting? That, that you know, is the, the key point. Is it taking your thoughts and transmitting it out? Are they keeping track of people? Are, are they conditioning people are they brainwashing people i don't know it it is again a lot of these people that have implants you know like uh well edmonds for example dave edmonds you know he removed his and uh, then he was re-implanted 
I've talked to a lot of people that actually have had their implants removed, either medically or done it themselves, and they claim that the implants all of a sudden reappeared somewhere else on them. Yeah, and and uh, while we was on there, my girlfriend was telling me, you know, she's done a lot of research on it. That a lot of these um, people that have implants, um, they have two or or three, and and you just don't know. Like there's a backup one, or so to speak. And who's to say they don't that they can't control you or? And that's why I asked him about that telepathic thing because a lot of people with implants think they're you know talk to them telepathically, but who's to say it's not through an implant that they're trying to get you to do something like you're mentioning? Well, what I find interesting, okay, that if they're abducting people and putting implants in them, you know, they're doing it to the layman, too. You know, he was, a, a, what, a, a contractor? or uh, and, and and you think about, well, maybe they would be, I would think if they were going to implant people, they would do it to, you know, politicians, uh, you know, scientists, medical doctors for some reason. That's what I would, if I was going to implant that's who I would implant, but no, they're implanting just the average person off the street. Yeah, and my theory on that is, I think it's more of them. It's, maybe it's DNA or it's it's a it's a soul thing. I don't think it's it's so much. If anything, maybe they don't want the smart person because they don't want somebody to try to figure something out against them. But yeah, it's a whole wide branch, and it's mostly maybe it's for something like that. I don't know. Oh, that or at one point, you know, maybe they, you know, maybe they didn't calculate uh, what they thought they were doing by the time frame. Uh, maybe they're implanting people to change their DNA a little bit. So when they have offsprings, you know, like children, their DNA is kind of maybe altered or maybe it's DNA uh, where they're altering it for other reasons. Or it could be, like I mentioned, like the Soviet Union sent over a whole bunch of people, you know, underground, you know, just in case we ever had a war, they would all of a sudden activate these sleeper agents, right, to do what they were supposed to do. And they actually, a lot of them were even brainwashed. They didn't even know that they, you know, had a mission, let's say, detonate a bomb, a nuclear, you know, bomb somewhere in, like in L.A. or New York. They didn't even know about it to a key word was said to them. And then they went into action. It makes you wonder if, like, these implants are being put in people's brains for when, like, a key message comes to them, it activates whatever their thoughts that's implanted in their brain also. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there could be millions of so-called Manchurian candidates out there controlled by aliens that maybe one day they want to flip a switch. Or, you know what, maybe they're just a bunch of college grads and we're nothing more than, like, you know, that farm in Tennessee where they study dead people and they use us for all kinds of different experiments just to get better at what they do. Who knows? Well, it's something. But could you imagine, like, one day they decide, hey, you know, okay, we're going to invade the Earth, Right. And for years, they have been implanting people, you know, the, uh, the the fathers, the mothers, then the children get implanted and the whole families for maybe one or two or three or four generations. And then one day they said, OK, well, now this is this right time to invade the earth. They flip the switch and then you got a certain majority of the population that is going to do whatever they're told to do. Yeah, and they won't even be able to stop it or may, maybe not even know what they're doing. And that, those are scary scenarios, but I think they're very plausible. Well, I, I don't understand why they would implant people. I mean, to the point of so many people, from what I'm gathering, there's a lot of people being implanted, a lot more than I ever realized. It, it, and it's, oh. it's scary how many people are claiming they've been abducted and implanted. And, and, and it's like... One out of every hundred or something like that is being implanted. Uh, absolutely. I, I think the figure is probably even higher because it's just like anything else. A lot of people don't even say nothing because maybe they're shame or they're, they're scared or whatever. Or they don't even know they're implanted. You know, Timothy yeah, just, didn't know he was implanted until he went and had an x-ray and then something showed up. Okay. Now, it could have been a piece of metal from a car accident. You know, it could have got embedded into his wrist. He didn't realize it. But no, when Dr. Roger Lear removed it, okay, and they had it sent out to analyze, it had all this different metals in it, including a silver content, okay, that couldn't have been formulated on Earth. 
uh, tells you right off the bat, well, then that was, you know, came from somewhere else. It didn't come from Earth. And then, you know, he how many people would see a, a UFO off to the hill and then, you know, then discovered that. And then after the implant is removed, right, then he sees a UFO again. I, I really feel bad for Timothy because I think that is some of the problem where he's tired all the time and all that stuff. Who knows what's going on with the poor guy? I wish he would go back in and check and see if he's been implanted again. It's n- nothing wrong with it because he was implanted once. I just find it so suspicious that he saw a UFO a second time or a third time after he had the implant removed. Absolutely. I would bet anything he's probably got one around the head area somewhere. And think about this. If they can do whatever they can with all these implants, and even if they're hit, listening in on us, how hard would it be to have your phone close to a, your head area and there's an implant that they can just, it could just maybe just automatically mess with it just because it's an implant close to the phone. Who knows? Well, it sure seems like when we talk about the, the subject, you know, it uh, the phone breaks up. I know every time it did. I, I mean, just perfect. Yeah. But when we were talking about a couple other things, the phone line seemed to work fine. We talk about Absolutely. we try to get back into, you know, pull more information uh, about the implant out of them. Then the phone line would like. What it was dropping out like every other or every third word it was starting. That's how bad it was getting. Tooth, th- I could see it, but he was on a landline, okay, and uh, then on a cell phone. The cell phone started out fine, and then when we started talking about, you know, the implant thing again, that's when it started in again. Every time, and you know, I I would probably bet anything that i bet some other his family members probably have implants and they like you say most people don't even know probably don't even know it but they probably do because it seems a pattern that's basically a pattern that i've noticed a lot of is more than one family member will have it especially if they've seen a ufo together well yeah that's what you know and his wife was scared i believe or she just didn't want to be checked for implant but she was with him the first time she was with him the other time you saw the UFO. Who knows? Maybe she's implanted too. So I don't know. Absolutely, and that, and that's another thing. If you know family members around each other all the time, especially you know uh, the husband and wife, and if you both got implants, even if one goes bad, they can probably tell what the other one's doing anyway because you're close by. You know what I find interesting on some of these people that been implanted. Okay. There have been like laborers, you know, working in warehouses, working on the docks, uh, being a contractor, you know, not a professional person. OK, not in being a medical doctor, not being a lawyer, not being a politician or a police officer. Uh, th- they were just a simple person, right? The average person, average job, you know, on the street. But then they have children and then their children turn out to be medical doctors lawyers and politicians i've seen a lot of those cases and i find that very interesting too when you look at it and that could be a, one of their agendas too maybe they're planting seeds in the future that maybe these children next generations are in positions that they want them to be in well maybe to take control of our planet absolutely that's very plausible yeah we're about uh, two minutes to break and you're going to hang with me the last half an hour right Absolutely. Yeah, I tell you one thing. I thank God I have never had the feeling I've been implanted. I never felt like I was abducted. Well, I take that back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my foot in my mouth, and I guess after the news, I'm gonna talk about what I think happened to me, and then we'll just talk about implants and you know all the strange things that could probably happen. But I'm gonna go into my story a little bit more about what happened in the desert with my ex-wife or my wife at the time. Uh, I just find it strange how it affected my life afterwards without even realizing what was going on. And it took me years and years and years to realize something in my life changed. And, And I didn't even realize it till about a year ago. And you figure the 70s when I ran into it, and it took me this long to realize it has affected my life. Absolutely. And think about all the people 
well, like Timothy or anybody else that has recognized it a lot sooner and how many years they know that and it's affected their lives in a lot of different ways because, man, I, I, I'm telling you, 